Hello and welcome to the Mutual Fund Show. I'm Neera Chow. The next 20 odd minutes, we'll be talking about uh, ideally one key aspect of debt mutual fund investing, and which is what should the positioning of investors be uh, over 2022 and 2023, if indeed the belief is that interest rates are likely to be on the way higher. And that is something that a lot of you have asked me um, on, on, on various mutual fund shows as well as on Twitter. And towards the end of 2021, uh, from a timing perspective, it couldn't have gotten any better. Uh, two gentlemen with whom I have uh, had maybe a bit of a similar discussion, uh, if my memory serves me correct, and who I believe are, are well adapted to tell us about what are their thoughts, join me right now on the show to talk about this very thing. Mr. Sandeep Bagla, CEO of Trust MF, and Keetan Shah, he's been on the show a number of times, needs an introduction. Gentlemen, both of you, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having us on the show. Pleasure is ours. Mr. Bagla, can I start off with you? What's your sense if the hypothesis is that rates are on the way higher? How should an investor, she or he, uh, alter her or his debt investment strategy? So that's a good question because, you know, when we say rates are higher on the way higher, it could mean that one part of the yield curve could go higher than the others. And as we all understand that if, if yields go up, interest rates go up, bond prices fall, thereby impacting adversely the return of the investor in the mutual fund scheme that he's invested. So, you know, it's quite possible that the shorter end of the yield curve goes up faster than the longer, longer end, but it's likely to be that the entire curve will rise. So whichever part that you are in, you are likely to experience slightly lower returns. So, you know, typically the, 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 the hypothesis would be that, you know, go into liquid funds so that there is no impact. But the problem is that in liquid fund, you get only close to three quarter, three half, between three and three and a half percent. If you were to increase your duration by another two years, let's say go into two year, two and a half year maturity kind of a bond or what we call roll down structures. Uh, for example, a corporate bond fund, which has a two and a half year maturity, which is yielding five and a half percent or a banking and PSU debt fund, which is yielding five and a half percent with two and a half year maturity. You will get substantially higher than uh, liquid fund returns, almost two and a half percent higher. And you could, since the investments will roll down, which means the maturity will keep coming down with time, the interest rate risk will not be very high. So even if interest rates go up, the returns will not be impacted. So the idea is basically to not earn great returns. One cannot uh, expect great returns when interest rates are going up. Uh, markets are on the verge of repricing themselves. So just like equity markets are repricing them from a situation where they were building in probabilities of growth and very easy monetary policy all over the world, even bond markets are repricing in an adverse way where you expect higher inflation, higher rates. So it's difficult to say which part of the curve will do better, but I think the roll down maturity funds of up to two, three years and let's say liquid money market fund should be all right. The viewers, if all of you understand, understood this entire answer, then we can wrap up the show because this is the synopsis really of, of, of what you should be doing. But let's try and simplify this further and take it step by step. But Mr. Bagla, thank you so much for explaining in such a lucid fashion what an investor ideally should be doing. Kirtan, can I bring you in in this conversation? Let's get step by step. What would happen typically to an average investor if she's holding current funds? And if rates were to go up, how do the NAVs get impacted? I'm presuming they get impacted negatively. Why so? And, and, and what's the resultant impact? How much deviation does it come? Is, is there a way to explain that? Uh, so Neeraj, first, uh, thank you so much for having me on the show. Uh, so Neeraj, typically, like Mr. Bagla already explained, what happens is when the yields go up, uh, you would uh, typically see that the NAVs of the bond funds would fall. The simple logic or explanation to this is uh, taking an analogy. Let's say today, if you want to invest in a fixed deposit, which pays you 5%, uh, you invest in that fixed deposit and lock yourself in for three years. Let's say rates go up tomorrow, right? Tomorrow, the same fixed deposit pays you five and a half, six, six and a half, because the rates have gone up. 
you still lock yourself in for a 5% for 3 years so while everybody else in the market on the same risk product is make going to make 5 and a half 6 6 and a half because rates have gone up and you are still making 5 so the product that you hold uh, will fall in value that is exactly what happens when rates go up so when rates go up like i explained 5 and a half 6 6 and a half and if you are still holding the 5% product like i just explained to you the value of the 5% product drops and which is why it is said that when interest rates go up bonds uh, or mutual funds are negatively impacted now uh, explanation to this is very simple uh, let's say let's say two examples i have a fixed deposit for 6 months and let's say i have a fixed deposit for 5 years now what will get impacted more and less the answer to this is very simple so if i have a 6 months fixed deposit right which i hold for 5% let's say hypothetically right my maturity is going to be at the end of the 6th month right so if i get my money back at the end of the 6th month i can reinvest it at a higher rate which prevails in the market and hence the loss of opportunity for me is only for 6 months so when rates go up this product which is going to get redeployed again will fall slightly less right is because you know that the maturity is very close by and you will be able to redeploy it at a higher rate in the market but the five year fixed deposit that i am holding would probably react more on the downside is because you've locked yourself in for a longer period of time and you are not going to be able to reinvest the principal any time soon and hence the rise in interest rate will impact the five year far more than the rise uh, will impact the six month uh, of course i don't want to get into the technicality of how a modified duration will come into picture with rise in rates but largely this is how it impacts where you are saying that when interest rates go up or let's say yields go up like the markets call it uh, the the product which has lower average maturity or modified duration whichever way you want to put that as would react less on the negative side and the product which has higher average maturity or modified duration will react more right because of what i just explained to you much Sure. Mr. Bagla, you want to add something to this? Then I would want to take it down to the other parameters that you mentioned. Yours is the all-encompassing answer and we're now trying to take it piecemeal, sir. So what Nitin said, said is correct, that if interest rates go up, another way of looking at it is that if you were to lock in to a certain interest rates today and if interest rates were to go up tomorrow morning, it is the opportunity cost that you have lost of investing tomorrow rather than today. So that's another way of looking at it, that if you invest at you know 5% FD today and tomorrow, for whatever reasons, rates go up to 7%, then you have lost that opportunity of you know investing at 7%. Right. Right. So Mr. Bagla and, Ms. and Kirtan, to both of you, um, two questions. Uh, uh, first is from a perspective of an investor who currently has debt mutual fund products across various maturities will be impossible to stick it out for all the maturities but pick up two or three time durations if you will mr bagla and if she wants to know what does she do with her current investments considering that she also believes <clears throat> like many people that rates are on their way up mr bagla i'll start with you first so you know there's a couple of things that have become popular in the past you know, I have seen uh, bond funds having rolled down maturities of 10 years uh, or seven years or five years that have become quite popular. And I feel that, you know, in our markets now, the cycles are becoming far shorter than what they used to be. So, you know, uh, you would probably see in five years, very low interest rates as well as very high interest rates. Probably, I hope not, but it's quite possible. It has been happening in the past. So in my mind that at a time when, you know, overnight trades are at three quarter, uh, locking in yourself uh, with the objective that you are going to uh, invest for 10 years is, uh, is perhaps a stretch because you might need the money uh, in less than 10 years, at which point of time interest rates might have risen and your mark to market would not be favorable for you. So if you are trying to match the requirement of your money uh, and the fund that you are investing in, which is a roll down fund, then you should do it wisely and you should not think of taking out the money before. So that was one point that, you know, do not go into roll down schemes more than three years, because in three years, in one year, if interest rates go up also, 
because the maturity has come down to two years, the interest rate impact will be low. And hence your uh, NAV is not likely to change much. The other I would say uh, is that, of course, most of the money that I see today in mutual fund schemes has rolled down to, has, has now moved to below three years. So most of the money is not lying in long-term GSEX or long-term income funds. Another asset category, which I would feel is uh, a bit of a uh, iffy is the floating rate kind of a bond fund. Now, floating rate bond fund typically, uh, you know, suggests that if interest rates go up, they should benefit, uh, which is uh, hardly the case, which never really happens. You, uh, the investors get locked into a spread in a bond, uh, which can increase, which is the, has the same impact as interest rates going up. So in my mind, the best floating rate fund is the liquid fund, which you know rolls up and you know your interest rates go up, keep going up. So I think that you know the funds to avoid, I would say immediately is credit funds, uh, floater funds, and uh, long-term roll-on funds. And I would leave the recommending to uh, Ketan because it's his uh, forte. Oh, sure. Well, uh, Kitan, actually, first, the first part of my question is the same one that I asked Mr. Bagla. Here's an investor who is listening to us, and she wants to know what does she do with her existing uh, investments, uh, which are in the debt products. Uh, the maturities may be slightly far out, maybe slightly near as well. What does she do? If the hypothesis is that rates are higher, yeah. Neeraj, very honestly, in my opinion, uh, investors, unless their goal is close by, should not do anything. Uh, I'm of a very firm belief that at the retail investor category, I don't really see a reason why most investors will really be able to time equities and more precisely debt really well. Uh, so if your goal is not nearby, don't do anything. I'll tell you why. Because in a lot of these funds, uh, unlike, uh, 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 unlike equity, liquidity has always been a problem. Rates moving up uh, because of whatever globally has been happening or India has been happening that M2M, M2M impact has already got accounted in the near term in the, in the fund. Now, if you were to get out of it, you are actually booking the notional M2M loss and making it a permanent loss for you. Also, debt, uh, in the debt category, taxation is an extremely important uh, data point that you should definitely consider. Because uh, if your investment is anything less than three years versus three uh, more than three years, the differential tax is extremely high. Right? So if I'm in a 30% tax bracket, I will end up paying 30% if my investment is less than three years. And uh, if I stay invested more than three years, indexation could actually help me save 50% of my tax outgo. So in my real opinion, I think uh, timing debt markets is even difficult than equities market, especially in my opinion for the retail investors. Tax is going to be a big dagger for most investors to try and do anything. So unless your goal is close by and you are actually going to need this money, try and do something, otherwise completely avoid uh, trying to actively time the market, which I believe most of us will not be able to do. Uh, Neeraj, to answer the second question, uh, look, in my opinion, there are there are uh, two, three things that an investor can do, right? Uh, first, of course, having said that, uh, and Mr. Bagla also rightly pointed out, I think if you try and keep your Average maturity is, uh, and I'm specifically not using, using modified duration as a term, but you try and keep your average maturities as low as possible, you will really be able to take advantage of the reinvestment. So if you invest in a liquid fund or an ultra short term fund kind of a fund, which is investing in CPCDs for two months, three months, at the end of this two months, three months, when the rates go up, again, when it gets reinvested, your fund will be able to make more uh, better investments. Okay. Sorry, you are preempting my... All for the future question, which is what an investor can do afresh. What about somebody who already has the paper? You are saying don't do anything. Don't do anything in my opinion. Okay, so that is part one. Okay, I, I'm sorry, Keetan. I'll come to what an investor should yeah. do for the new investments in just a moment. But I just wanted to get the first part of the question answered because almost everybody who watches these shows has some investments already. So for the new investment, newer investment, slightly easier. But the difficult or the tricky part is what to do with uh, stuff like this wherein everybody on every media house is saying that oh rates are going to go up so try and um, uh, manage your portfolios accordingly mr bagla uh, be, uh, just, i the email that we got from you suggested that retail should be advised to break the fixed income part of the portfolio into a mix of many different kinds of funds 
I know you briefly alluded to that. Can you elaborate a bit on that, sir? It will help everyone. <clears throat> no, since uh, see, it's basically the same spirit in which Kirtan is saying that is difficult to time the market, and the volatilities have increased, and there has been uh, instances of central bank puts where, at the instance of uh, any possible disruption to the economy, central banks step in and their balance sheets keep growing. Right, so in that scenario, I would say that probably break your investments into various categories. Uh, if you can do that as per your investment horizon, that would be great. Otherwise, you invest partly into corporate bond fund, partly into banking and PSU debt fund because the quality is typically good. Have some money in in the money market or liquid funds for liquidity management. Probably, you know, uh, take some duration call as well. Uh, although my personal sense at this point of time is that uh, given the given the observation that I have had that typically the 10 year yield in India trades at about 250 basis points higher than expected inflation, uh, then the fair value should be closer towards seven, seven half. I would still say that, you know, put 10% lower your uh, allocation, but put 10% in duration funds as one never knows and one cannot time the market. And once yields go up, then you sort of, you know, rebalance the portfolio. Uh, so besides credit funds, I would suggest that, you know, in every bucket, maturity bucket, uh, you sort of split your investment as per your preference. Okay, but diversify essentially. That's what Mr. Yes. Bhagwa seems to be suggesting. Now, keep them. Uh, one, do you agree? And it's okay to it's okay to disagree, by the way. So that is part one. And then follow that up, Kirtan, with uh, uh, what would the modus operandi be? I mean, your one of your clients is coming to you and asking you uh, fresh money to be put to work on the debt side. What would you advise? So Neeraj, I have actually three things to discuss here. Of course, I don't want to go on the uh, very basic saying, keep money at the lower end of the curve. I think all of us have discussed that. But I think uh, there are three ways I will look at this particular situation. Uh, the first way is uh, keeping it very plain and simple, uh, like you would do in a fixed deposit. If you really want to deploy this cash for three years, try and find a fund which will have a three years of average maturity, right? Like you would do in a fixed deposit. If you want to invest for three years, you try and do a three year fixed deposit. I think this will make sure that uh, though in the near term, if there is volatility, at the end of the day, you are okay to ride the volatility curve because you're okay to invest for three years. So first, the simplest way to do it, try and match your investment horizon with the average maturity of the fund. Uh, second is more, more uh, asset allocation based approach, where I'm saying try and split this uh, fixed income investment into three buckets. First, do liquidity, second, do core, and third, do satellite right? Or tactical, whichever way you would want to put that as. So let's say have 10% of your money or 15% of, of your money in liquid funds or ultra short term funds or money market funds that will largely take care of the liquidity that you would need as and when. Depending on your risk profile, right? Create the 70% of core market, right? So let's say if you are, you are conservative, try and keep that in short term debt funds. Let's say you are moderate, you try and do banking PSU, corporate bond funds. Let's say you are aggressive, right? You can do a combination of medium term funds plus credit, right? Depending on your risk profile, that's 70%. And the remaining 20% is, uh, is uh, satellite or more, more aggressive, right? Uh, having a small part of your portfolio, which is slightly aggressive than your core and liquid is okay. And that's how, that's how uh, an asset allocation is that typically done. So depending on, again, on your risk profile, you choose what part of your portfolio do you want to keep for this 20%. Let's say, so if I'm conservative and I have kept 10% in liquid, 70% in uh, short-term debt fund, right? So the remaining 20% can probably go uh, as a combination of 10% to medium term and 10% to credit risk. Depends again. But largely this will, like Mr. Bhagra also said, this will diversify the portfolio and in my opinion uh, this will be a well diversified portfolio the third is more tactical in nature uh, neeraj for somebody who's who's who understands uh, fixed income or believes that the advisor understands and he will advise it correctly i think if you look at historical data points over the last 20 years 
uh, you would see that in every rising interest rate market, barbell as a strategy is really worked out well for investors. What's barbell? To keep it very simple, you've got 100 rupees to invest, put 50 rupees at the lower end of the curve and put 50 rupees at the higher end of the curve. Right? This strategy has almost always worked in a rising interest rate environment, but uh, you should only do this with at least a three-year uh, investment horizon in mind or else you will get caught on the wrong end. So I think depending on what your objective is while you are listening to this interview, I think either of the three things that I spoke to you of may, may be of help. Yeah. So e either you've listened to this, if you're not listening to this, uh, or if you're not understanding, we'll write a story around this and you will get a sense of that uh, as well later on. Um, now, after we thank Mr. Bagla Keetan, we would request you for maybe some recommendations and they don't necessarily be in a particular order, but just a few names so that people can understand where to, which are the well-managed ones. But before we do that, Mr. Bagla, I would want to ask you a question that uh, a typical viewer would ask or wonder that the way uh, these shows are being done and everybody's talking about what should an investor do, a fund manager within his mandate or within her mandate would also be doing things in order to mitigate the risks as much as possible. What is it that fund managers are doing? I mean, there is this whole concept of active fund management. It could be used, interpreted in various ways. Can you talk a bit about that? So most fund managers in anticipating uh, rapid hikes in interest rates uh, would have reduced their maturity substantially. So for example, in a short-term fund, if the mandate is to remain between uh, a duration of one to three years, most fund managers would be anyway closer to 1.5 to 1.75. So they have reduced risk to quite an extent. Uh, so at the active fund managers, you know, if one can actively manage uh, things, then of course, a lot of alpha can be generated. And if interest rates are on their way down, uh, then a lot of returns, double digit returns can also come from income funds and yield funds. But that is not to be right now. But uh, to your point, uh, most investors, uh, investment managers, uh, being active uh, fund managers, have reduced the duration and the, improved the credit quality of their funds in order to improve the liquidity situation, as well as uh, reduce the interest rate risk component of the uh, funds that they are investing. OK. Um, Mr. Bagla, uh, really appreciate you taking the time out and joining us and giving us the synopsis uh, and, and, and your wisdom. Thank you so much. And I'm sure it will be helpful to a bunch of people who are watching this or reading about this over the weekend. I hope so. Uh, otherwise, one can reach me on Twitter for any direct queries or you know, uh, get onto your channel. And thanks a lot for inviting me. Well, the pleasure is ours. Uh, but yeah, that, that is a useful suggestion, viewers. You can reach to him directly on Twitter. Do search for him and maybe... If he has, finds the time, he can maybe answer some of those queries as well. Thanks, Mr. Bhagla, for joining in today. Thank you so much. The pleasure is ours. Um, well, Keetan, um, just one quick follow-up to you as well. Uh, so, you, you've obviously, we've seen uh, what is it that, uh, you know, an individual investor ideally should do. Now, within these buckets, are there, are there funds that you believe, not necessarily in a particular pecking order, but are there funds that you believe an investor could ideally look at uh, from a separate house or, or a different category, what have you, or a mix of the two? Neeraj, in my opinion, one very important thing that investors should definitely keep in mind is do not try and invest in tech funds with uh, lower AUM because they are typically the ones who are going to find it extremely difficult if there is going to be a liquidity crunch tomorrow. And we've yes. seen, seen this happening multiple times in the past. So uh, while I may give you a couple of names, uh, uh, I might not be able to spell out the logic as to why I'm doing, but this is one very simple but yet extremely important data point, I think, which retail investors should definitely keep in mind. Now, uh, uh, so let's say if you talk about at the longer end of the curve, because I said you could do a barbell 50% at the lower end and 50% at the higher end. At the higher end, you can look at uh, Aditya Birla Government Security Fund. That's one fund that we that we like. Uh, uh, we also spoke about medium term fund uh, in the tactical asset allocation. Uh, you can look at SBI Magnum me medium duration. We like that fund. At the shorter end of the curve, you can look at uh, ICICI short term. Uh, credit, uh, very honestly, though this is, uh, 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 I mean, a lot of, lot of people on the show might, might not really 
discuss about this but for the next 2 3 years i think i am personally very gungo about uh, credit i think uh, uh, on the debt space with somebody who, who understands and is willing to take that slight risk credit is a very good opportunity today an hdfc or an icici credit makes a lot of sense to me so yeah a couple of funds uh, maybe i i i hope that helps it does kirtan and thank you so much for joining us today and giving us your recommendations and your views really appreciate your time thank you so much for having me on the show as ours and viewers thanks for tuning in